Welcome back. According to the National Institute on Aging, Alzheimer's disease is currently ranked as the sixth leading cause of death in the United States and the third leading cause of death for older people. Rain Alzheimer's Caregiver Link program provides free classes for caregivers to learn the skills to better communicate with their loved ones and to feel empowered on how to deal with challenging behaviors that their loved ones might be exhibiting. Joining us to tell us more is Marsha Hen, Program Manager at Rain Alzheimer's Caregiver Link Program. Welcome, Marsha. So good to see you again. Hi, how we, are you? We met so at the nice, first time yeah. at Orchard Beach when you all were doing the walk, we which was very our successful. Walk, yeah. Thank you so very much for coming. It yeah, was wonderful that you that you covered it. It was great. We appreciate I love it. seeing everybody out there. They were so supportive um, yes. and just very excited to let people know about the services that you offer at Rain. So why don't we begin with that? Talk about some of the classes that you're offering to the community. Sure. So um, the Alzheimer's Caregiver Link Program uh, at Rain provides free uh, classes to caregivers. Those classes consist of educational um, uh, Alzheimer's educational classes as well as wellness uh, sessions. And those classes are basically based on, uh, they start out kind of like a 101, understanding dementia, what uh, the different stages uh, look like, uh, of course, the different types of dementia, uh, and how those stages progress, mm -hmm. and how to better plan for long-term planning for your, for your uh, loved one. Um, the, the actual uh, focus is really to assist the caregiver. The caregiver is often feeling overwhelmed, um, tired, overburdened. Uh, the responsibilities are probably not just of their loved one with dementia mm -hmm. and, and Alzheimer's, uh, but possibly also, you know, their own responsibilities, their full-time job, their kids, their spouse, or other, you know, responsibilities that they may have. So you're really burning the candle at both ends. Wow. It's it's a lot of work. And so we want to be there to try to help them um, by providing consultations also in our office to have them speak to us about what their needs are. Uh, we can go ahead and actually also, you know, make referrals to other services that RAIN has or other organizations within the Bronx or obviously within the five boroughs. Um, so, so basically it's just kind of being that guide for them uh, when you're overwhelmed uh, with all the responsibilities of being a caregiver for somebody with Alzheimer's. One is usually um, losing their focus yes. <laughs> and having somebody kind of assist you is very helpful. Uh, I'm a former caregiver and I know that you know, that would have been something that I would have loved to have had, but we didn't even look out for resources. Mm. We did not it's as a family. About, okay, we just need to get this done. Just get it done. Right? Yeah, so it's a, it's a lot of work. Yeah, yeah, you can imagine. And I just, I think it's great that uh, services like yourself, like Rain, and also PSS Circle of Care, they were just yes, on the show they a were just earlier. earlier um, yeah. Just talking about this important topic, because like you said, it's like you don't even realize that there's help out there because you're so committed to helping your loved one that you're not thinking of the support for yourself as well. Exactly, exactly, Veronica. I think that um, many times because you are so overwhelmed, even if you kind of are aware that there are some resources, let's say for example in wellness sessions, one tends to always put oneself and the back burner. Mm -hmm. And you kind of think I'll be fine. And um, that's definitely, you know, maybe okay right. uh, in the beginning but it generally is not something that is recommended. You need to take care of yourself. You know, they often say when you take uh, a flight, yeah. you know, you go Absolutely. on the airplane, they tell you, you put on that mask on for yourself before first you and before everyone. you can help anybody else. Yep. And that's something that we as a society kind of forget, All the time. you know? And so we want to serve everybody and that's a beautiful thing, but we need to start with a more beautiful thing, which is caring for ourselves so we can care for everybody else, for our community. So what's that first step? Because I think many times we procrastinate to find help, right? Yes. <laughs> like oh yeah, yeah I'll pick up the phone yes I'll check out the website yeah. and if somebody even gives you the website to check out you don't go ahead and do it how yeah. can we encourage mm -hmm. people to go ahead and to reach out to you all to get the help the help that they need yeah that's a huge point I think also uh, another huge aspect is a privacy issue a lot of mm -hmm. people may not want to you know um, reach out for help because they may feel this is something that is still kind of stigmatized and they feel I'm embarrassed I don't want to let them know about you know the the chaos that might be you know arising in the family so one of the best things to do is to understand that you are not alone there mm -hmm. are so many families unfortunately that are going through very similar if not you know equally the same um, chaos and difficulties yes. that you're going through when you're caring for somebody with dementia uh, specifically with Alzheimer's 
Um, and so to know that you're not alone m makes you feel like, okay, let me go out, let me make that step. If somebody else has gone through this, they might help me, you know, with my particular difficulties right now, whether it's, um, you know, wandering of the, your loved one, sundowning, um, incontinence. Uh, there, there are so many challenging behaviors that one has to kind of, um, you know, deal with. And so we can help you with those in our classes of, uh, in our Alzheimer's educational classes. How, how to deal with that. How often are the classes offered? So uh, we actually have those on a monthly basis uh, at, our, at our offices, but we also do in home f uh, and tailored for family classes. So if a family is having difficulty getting out to our facility uh, as a group, you know, everybody has different schedules, different times. Um, and so if it's a difficulty to them, I can provide an in-home class to them. Uh, and we tailor it to their loved one. So okay, if there's anything great. specific that's going on, you know, with their loved one at the time, if they're dealing with, you know, hallucinations or some form of agitation, then I'll address that specifically to that family. So there's no excuse. You're making it easy for everyone. I hope we are. Yes, I <laughs> hope we are. Definitely. It's something that we want to, you know, we have to hold hands with us. Yes. We have to hold hands. And it's about, you know, a community that needs to help. And we want to be there for them. Excellent. Well, Marsha, mm -hmm. thank you so much for letting us thank know you. about the services that you're offering, not just for the seniors in the community for many years, yeah. but now also to the caregivers. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Thank you very much for having us. Of course. Thank you. For more information, you can visit their website at RainInc.org or on Facebook at Rain Alzheimer's Caregivers Link Program. We've come to the end of our show today. I'd like to thank all our guests for joining us and you, the viewers, for tuning in. If you missed any part of today's show, you can catch the Recable cast at 5 and 10 p.m. on Optimum Channel 67, Verizon Fios 33, or watch anytime on the web at bronsnet.org. That wraps it up for us here on the set of Open. I'm Veronica Guiti. Make sure to keep this channel wide open and remember to always let your light shine.